Toto Steve Picaro talks about the making of Taking It Back from Toto One, his first lead vocal for the band. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Toto's debut album came out October 15th, 1978. I was 18 years old and I was really excited. I was deeply into music and all my musical friends who really read all the liner notes, we knew about these cats. And at least most people had heard of them through Boz Skaggs' Silk Degrees, of course. David Page was a co-writer on five songs on there. He was an arranger. He played keyboards on the album. Jeff Beccaro was all over it. And their original bassist, David Hungate, as well. Then, of course, the follow-up to Silk Degree, Down To Then Left, featured Steve Lukather. And by then, these cats had already done a lot of session work. And the great thing about a debut album like this is we, we heard a band that was incredibly tight and strong writing great pop songs, or I should even say rock pop songs, with four different singers. I've mentioned this before in this series, but Bobby Kimball, Steve Lukather, Steve Piccaro, and David Page. Taking it back with Steve Piccaro's song, we talked about the making of that song. <laughs> but a band with layers, when that first album dropped, everyone started realizing, like, taking it back. When I heard that, and I'd hear David, and I'd hear Luke, and I, Bobby, and I'd go, like, there are multiple, that, that doesn't have to work. It doesn't always work. When you sang, and I heard your song on that album. Taking it back. That, mm -hmm. that, yeah, taking it back. That was layers to me. That, 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 that solidified the layers thing. I'm going, there's a lot going on here, and it's working together. Great, thanks. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, taking it back was real cool. I got to, I just had this idea. I knew my my brother Jeff's godfather, Emil Richards, had this, um, uh, you know, percussionist friend of my dad's, um, had this marimba that they sawed all the bars in half, longwise, and they took an octave higher and put it next to the, they, it was called an octave marimba, this thing he had put together, and the mallets were double mallets. Each mallet had two heads on it so that you would always strike two bars that were in octaves. And that's what's on all the backbeats. Hitting the chord with four mallets playing this octave marimba, you know, and uh, um, and that's Marty Page's horn arrangement and string arrangement on it. Um, yeah, but it was very, uh, uh, with the percussion, it was all very kind of scored out. You know what I mean? I kind of had it in my head how I wanted to hear it and it and it came out great you know. could you have recorded if someone said uh, Steve we need you to record your own album then could you think you could have done it no my work habits were so terrible and so sporadic you know what I mean I really for the longest time uh, uh, seriously until very recently relatively speaking like in the in the wasn't until the mid to late 90s that I was helping James Newton Howard on on a film project and he kind of turned to me and said do you want to try this? And I and I just said, you know, I've never had to have music done by Thursday. I don't yeah. know if I can. I've always taken my time. If I didn't have a song for Toto, they didn't care. They had a million songs ready to go. I've never had to write with a deadline. I've always, I even kind of was like, hey man, I don't want to force it. You know, I don't know where it comes from, but uh, you know, this is a gift from God and I don't want to abuse it. You know, I just want to, you know, have it flow through me, you know, whenever it does. and. I don't want to, you know, it's a bunch of bullshit. I, I, you know, then all of a sudden I'm reading about Randy Newman, you know, one of my heroes, and how he, you know, when he, when he would, it would be time to write for an album, how he would rent an office, he'd put an upright piano in there, he'd get a cassette player, a bunch of legal tabs, and a bunch of number two pencils, and he'd go to work every day, nine to five, nine to five, he'd go to work writing his new album, just like checking in at the office. He treated it just like that. You know, that's how he would write his next album. He turns it on, you can turn it on and off. You know what I mean? And I realized that when all of a sudden I started doing film work and started doing TV work and I had deadlines. And believe me, you're going into the studio when you don't feel like it. You know, and your friends are calling you and saying, come on, let's have dinner. And it's the last thing you want to do. If you could put it off, you would, right? But I'd have a deadline the next day and I'd have to be, no, I got to work tonight. And... And it hit me, though, that, you know what? Even when I wasn't in the mood, my work still was just as good as when I was in the mood. It's just sometimes it's just work. But I always keep the bar. The bar is where the bar is. And, and uh, um, it's, it's, it's like growing up, finally. It yeah. was like I never had to grow up being in the band the way I was. And I knew how to show up on sessions on time and all that. But uh, as far as my personal work habits went with my own music, they were lousy and uh, um, 
I always needed help. And now I'm much more driven, as I finally proved to myself with my first album, and I was able to get that done. And I kind of implemented a deadline on myself. I knew I was going out with Toto at a certain time, and I just wanted to get it done, so I was driven. And I, you know, from doing film work and stuff, I, I know how to get stuff done when I need to. And I know how to pick up the phone and get whatever help I need and get it done and deliver. Yeah. And that's, I just started treating my solo album like it was a film score I was delivering and just, yeah. just delivered. You know, removed my excuses once and for all. If you want to see Toto live this year, it's 40 trips around the sun. There'll be links to getting tickets. They're celebrating their 40th anniversary. Remember, links in the description of this video. If you've asked us to, to help out on this channel, to be a volunteer, we will get back to you. We've just been bombarded by hundreds and hundreds of emails from everyone. So don't worry, we will get back to every single person. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.